Do you think the movie would have been as successful if Evan Ginsberg was not the associate producer? (laughs) (laughs) It was surreal. Oh, my God. It was surreal. I suddenly was playing myself. We are honored to have the great Lloyd Annoy. Lloyd, I'm hacking up your name. Yeah. Straighten me out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is it? Is it? Uh, uh, you're not. Uh, one more time. You're not the first one. Uh, it's Anawai. 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 Yeah. Beautiful. Nice. yeah. Love it. I don't, that must be annoying all the time here. They do it on. That's what everybody says. You know the. They'll say it annoy, and then they say, "Yeah, we're annoying." <laughs> there you go. That's pretty- How do you guys feel about the United States, and is it, is it equally as strong for the love of the United States within your culture? Uh, yeah, of course, uh, because um, see, Samoa has got three little different islands, four different little islands, but you got the main islands, which is American Samoa and Western Samoa, and how American Samoa became part of the United States is because during the war, they used to use, uh, you know, the island for the ships. They used to hide them in the cove. And, you know, the U.S. Uh, uh, Navy used to, you know, hide the ships over there. So, you know, they they became, you know, they decided to become part of the United States. And uh, we, you know, we love America. I mean, uh, I was raised here and born here, but the rest of my family, you know, my dad and my uncles, they were born in the islands. And, uh, I love it there, but, uh, you know, America's America. Lloyd, I got to ask you, after uh, giving us your thoughts on Brittany Griner and uh, giving us a little history lesson on Samoa, being a great member of the Samoan professional wrestling dynasty, after these first couple of questions, are you feeling oozy yet? <laughs> I'm always I'm, I'm always oozy. I'm go. always oozy, juicy. There we go. Could you get us into the family? We, we, we want to be oozy. Or is it the New York accent? Hey, we're just hey, done. Well, hell, if if Sammy Zayn could be oozy, you could be oozy as well. We I love it. I Very love funny. it. All right, let's let's actually talk pro wrestling. Obviously, you're part of the Great Samoan Dynasty. What was it like being raised by? You know, we grew up with one of the greatest tag teams of all time, Afa and Sika. What was it like being around folks such as these? I mean, I love my dad and my uncle. You know, my they they were one of the best tag teams in the world, and and my dad will always be my idol. Uh, but when we were younger, it was rough. I mean, my dad didn't hold no punches on us. If we wanted to be in the business, we had to learn the hard way. And uh, I respect my dad for training me and training the rest of our family that way because we respect the business a lot more than a lot of guys out there. And I'm not saying anything bad about any of the boys in the business, but some of us work a lot harder than others. And uh, what I mean by that is, you know, respect in the business and, and, and knowing where you came from because it actually put food on the table for us when we were young and it puts food on the table for my kids. So, you know, in order to respect the business, we, we worked hard for it and worked hard to where we, you know, where we where we belong in the business. You know, all of, you know, Vince McMahon has got a great, the McMahon's got a great uh, relationship with us. And uh, you can see a lot of our family are always going to be involved in WWE. Right now, there's four of them that are there right now. Uh, and uh, they're doing great. Are you excited that Triple H is in charge after Vince McMahon stepping down? I like I like Vince, you know what I mean? Uh, he is rough, you know, one of the best businessmen I've ever seen. 
But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of happy that Triple H is in there because he's bringing a lot of the talent back. And um, there's a lot that they got rid of, and uh, they're bringing them back. Like, for example, uh, Braun Strowman, great guy, awesome dude. Um, he was at his peak when they got rid of him, and uh, now they bring him back. So I'm hopefully that they can bring him back up to the top. Uh, and, uh, for example, I heard that they're bringing Steven Regal back, which is going to be awesome. Correct. Because Regal is – Man, he's top notch. I've I've learned a lot from Regal, and I've respected him and sat down and really had some deep, deep, deep talks with, with him when I was younger and even you know, um, a few years back. And uh, Regal's an awesome dude. How many family members you have at this family reunion? Not everybody was there, man. Uh, <laughs> I say we had about 160 there. Did wow. Sammy? Did Sammy Zane and come? That wasn't or? even. That wasn't even a quarter of it. Nah, Sami Zayn didn't make it, man. He's uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. He's Uzi. I figured he would be. I there. told you, Lloyd. I I'm told sorry, you who you were gonna get from this guy. You can't take me anywhere. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He, he wasn't. He wasn't feeling that Uzi that day. You know. What I mean, oh. I think he felt he was being around too many of us. <laughs> Lloyd, were you were you in the wrestler? <clears throat> yes. So how were you? chose to go to the wrestler like how did they pick you for that movie by the way one of the all-time great movies forget about yes. just being a wrestling movie yes how did you end up being in the wrestler well actually uh my dad they got in touch with my dad to um train mickey rourke for their movie oh wow uh but before mickey rourke a lot of people don't know it was supposed to be nicholas cage yes. correct mm -hmm. we started training nicholas cage and then um uh, i guess the national treasure 2 came out and uh well they wanted him to do national treasure 2 and so he pulled out and that's when they got in touch with big uh you know mickey work and uh, said listen we're giving you a second chance because we all know that mickey work you know he wasn't doing too good back then right but uh you know i think he did a hell of a job i wow. mean we trained him it was it, it was great he's a hell of a guy real nice guy how do I mean, you think Nick Cage uh, would have been if he was in that role instead of Mickey Rourke? Do you think the movie would have been as successful? No. No. I don't think he could have played the part as well as Mickey did. I mean, his body wasn't up to par like uh, Mickey Rourke, but, uh, I mean, Mickey did a hell of a job. Do you think the movie would have been as successful if Evan Ginsberg was not the associate producer? <laughs> it was surreal. Oh, oh, my oh my god! It was surreal. I suddenly was playing myself. Right. <laughs> Dude. Oh my god! Oh boy! All right, so. Anyway, <laughs> I hope he didn't call you for 350 uh, too days. Funny. All right, anyway. Um, <laughs> what? I can't help it. Oh, poor Lloyd. Next. Oy. Lloyd, you get the call to the WWE. What is that like? You finally get to the big time. Yeah. How does that feel? Yeah. Uh, it, it's great, man. It, it, I was young. Uh, actually, I started with WWF uh, back in 1992. And I was on the road with them. Uh, and I remember when uh, my dad and them went back and they were going as the head shrinkers. And that's when uh, Yoko went as Yokozuna. And I was on the road. And uh, at that time, they had so many characters that wanted to come up with me. And then at the end, I ended up going back to Puerto Rico and wrestling over there because I wanted to learn this character that Chief J. Strongbow and Sergeant Slaughter came up with for me. So uh, when I went over there, Carlos Colon had me be this savage, you know, wild Samoan. So I was like, man, I'm supposed to be doing this character, and, and here I am, you know, being something that they don't want me to be on TV. But uh, I ended up going back in 95 and 96 and going back and doing the head shrinkers with my brother after he left and then resigned back in 1997. And that was something that was uh, – it was great to sign with those guys again. Uh, it was actually a shock because I wasn't looking forward to going back because I was. We were just trying to make you know uh, go to ECW at that time, and uh. Um, we had a meeting with Vince, 
uh, and my dad and uh, Rikishi had a, a, a meeting with the, uh, him. And uh, so uh, it was me and uh, my, my cousin, Mac, I rest his soul. Uh, he was, uh, we were sitting in the office and uh, they're upstairs doing their meeting. And next thing you know, my dad comes down and got this face and he's pissed off. And I'm like, oh God, this didn't go good. <laughs> so they come out and my dad's like, this place, excuse my language, he's like, yeah, we put money in this building. He's looking up at the building, and he's this and that. And next thing you know, he turns around, and he looks at me and my cousin Matt, and he goes, you guys got a job again. <laughs> so, wow. And so it was pretty cool, you know. He shocked us and, and surprised us. And Vince uh, signed us back in 97 as uh, no, the New Age Samoans. That's the name we were going to go as at that time. And uh, we were on the road for a while, and uh, they were going to air us. They put us on. They took us off, put us on, and then finally – uh, things happen to where, you know, they just change their mind about things like they always do. And I was a little frustrated with them, but, you know, that comes and goes, you know, I mean, that's the business, you know, it's, you know, you, you can't have everything, but um, I, I, I did all right. Well, after that, I went to ECW and uh, did two years over there with Paul, which Paul is another Vince McMahon, one of the best in, in the business. Well, I love ECW. Great ideas. ECW was my favorite company back in the day. Talk, talk to us about the company that basically changed the wrestling landscape, uh, landscape and the Samoan Gangster Party. Man, we, I, the thing about ECW is when you went there, Paul gave you, he gave you leverage. He, he let you come up with your own ideas. He came up with his ideas, but he would let you add into it. And over there, it was just open. We all had a good time. There was nobody where you had stooges around, you know, saying this on you. Everybody had a great time. I mean, where could you go in the locker room where you could bring a, a fifth of uh, a whiskey and a, and a, a whole <laughs> a whole damn uh, thing of uh, beer in there and drink and have a good time, you know? <laughs> yeah. We, uh, it, it was fun, you know? You got New Jack and, uh, up in the top doing an April. There. <laughs> I don't know about that, man. I, I stayed away from that. But a couple <laughs> oh, beers, boy. yeah, I would have. <laughs> yeah. Could you tell that ECW was not for long, though? I mean, just the way it sounds, it's totally different than the business model of Vince. It is. And I was shocked that um, Vince actually bought ECW because he bought it when it was at its prime, too. I mean, it was hot on right. TV. Right. And I, I thought it was going to it was going to give Vince some, you know, some competition uh, besides WCW back then. And it was. I thought it was just going to end up with just WWE and ECW because WCW was already on its way out. But, um, I, I mean, Paul, I mean, they couldn't get nobody better than to, to bring that company up than Paulie. I mean, he, he bring it from a different level. Now let's go back, back, back to the 89 mm -hmm. or nineties where I actually used to work for Todd Gordon, where it was, Eastern Championship Wrestling, right. original ECW, when it was right. just me and Sandman and a few other guys. We were actually we're actually considered the real original ECW. If you you know if you want to go back, that with the Morocco and Snooker were even around in those early days, correct? Before that, oh, even before before that. So like wow. the Tommy Cairo yeah. days, right? With Tommy Cairo, yes. So when nice. Tommy Cairo was there, I mean, there was a lot of us. There was a uh, JT Smith. I mean, there's a lot of guys that were there before, and we, I mean, we had a good time. Todd Gordon was a good guy. He did good, great business, great businessman as well. Never had a problem with Todd. He kept me as a top heel uh, for years until uh, Eddie Gilbert came in, got rest his soul. Uh, and then, you know, Eddie started bringing people from Memphis, and uh, I was like, uh, it's time for me to leave because mm. I knew he was going to bring everybody from Memphis and get everybody out of there. So right. I just took off on my own and uh, – that was that, and then did my own thing from there. What did you think when you saw Shane Douglas throw the belt in the trash can and pull out an ECW championship? <laughs> what was what was your thoughts? I don't know, Shane, man. Uh, <laughs> he's a he's a he's a character, man. I, I like Shane. He's came a long, he's come a long way. Um, big difference in attitude in him once he went to ECW. I mean, he was he was cool when he was in WWE. We were all there together when he was. Uh, forget the character he was. Uh, he was like a, a 
Who Dean? Teacher or whatever. I Dean, name was. Dean Douglas? Shit, yeah. <laughs> Dean Douglas. Dean, Dean Douglas, Douglas yeah. yeah. When yeah. I was there, Dean <laughs> Douglas, you know, I mean, Shane has always been cool. Yeah. But when he went to ECW, man, it just, he just turned the notch up and said, you know, screw it. This is me. I'm going to come out of, it's like he came out of the closet. Yeah. Did you get to come across Vince? You obviously worked for Vince. Did you get to ever talk to Vince or get a feel for Vince McMahon, the person? Uh, you, you know, <laughs> it's funny you say that because uh, you have to, first of all, you can't get to Vince because he goes right to his office. Okay. You know, he's got his office in every building he's at. And, uh, you know, you got to, you might as well get in line because there's a line to go talk to him. But uh, the good thing about it is every time we see him, he come through the, you know, to the uh, hallways and all the time he say, hey kid and he go over there and he when i was younger he'd always rub my head like this you know and <laughs> but uh I, I always respect him i was kind of scared to always talk to him but after a while you know when i got older i was like yeah, hey i gotta i gotta talk to this guy to see if i can get a job again but uh vince is vince is all right i mean once you sit down and talk with him he's 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 not a bad person you know it's it's no small feat making a career as a professional wrestler right because there's definitely a big gap between the major superstar and then the mid-level guy and then even the low-level guy yeah yeah how how do how do you make a career out of it and at any point you're like i'm done i can't handle this anymore yeah um I was saying earlier, and I was telling somebody else this as well, um, the wrestling business is rough. I mean, you, you love to hate it, you hate to love it, you know, but it's something that once you're in it, you know, it's kind of hard to get out of. Right. Lloyd, would you think winning the <laughs> Qatar Championship, am I saying the, the country? Qatar. Right? I'll hack Qatar. up the everything. Qatar? Was the biggest part of your Qatar. career? <laughs> Qatar. How, how does it go. rank? Thank you. How does it, how does it rank winning the Qatar? Where does it rank in your career? <laughs> oh man, it was great because I got to wrestle and uh, win it from some uh, great guys. Uh, it was uh, actually it was a, a four way. It was me and a gentleman from uh, Austria called Chris the Bambi Killer. He actually was on contract with WWE a few years ago. But uh, it was me, him, and against Alberto Del Rios and uh, RVD, wow. Rob Van Dam. And I was honored to, you know, be part of it and uh, ended up beating Rob Van Dam with the Samoan drop, uh, which I ended up breaking three of his ribs. I felt so bad because uh, yes. at the end, I don't know if uh, you've seen the tape, but I just couldn't get up on my shoulders and I went to grab him and – it's kind of like he was a dead weight. So I lifted him up with all my weight, and I went straight back. When I went right back, you could just see him fold up. He's like, oh! And his shoulder's up, and the referee saw him put his shoulder down. It was one, two, three. And then uh, next day, I get a call, and he's like, hey, Oos, you broke three of my ribs. I'm like, oh. I felt so bad. Uh, Rob's a good dude, man. I love that guy. That wasn't very oozy of you. No, it wasn't Usi and me, but hey, I had to do what I had to do. What was it like, you know, dealing with Carlos Colon? And was it easy for you to go to Puerto Rico considering what happened to Bruiser Brody, you know, a few years before you got over there? It was easy because my dad just made that phone call and uh, Carlos opened, you know, let me in with open arms. But when I got down there, it was a different story. Okay. I was like, my uncle was there. My uncle Sika was there, and I was kind of like happy he was there. But um, after about three weeks, we were there. He left. And he went. He came, went back. Came back to the states, and I was there by myself. And it was just me and uh, you know the, a lot of other guys that were there. You know the guys from Puerto Rico, and then uh, a few guys from the states that I didn't know at that time. Uh, and then it was Barbarian's brother, uh, Sione. He he, uh, he was there with me. But still, it, it was it was it was rough in the beginning. Uh, <laughs> when you go out there and you know you're used to wrestling over here, you know somebody in the ring, you know you walk into the ring and somebody spits on you, you know you're gonna spit back at them like you know son of a bitch, <laughs> you mm. know. So uh, that kind of like happened to me in Puerto Rico, and I tell this story because it's it's a shoot, it's straight. 
I was uh, wrestling one of their guys. He's actually a cop in Puerto Rico. His, call, his name was La Ley de Puerto Rico. And I ended up beating him. So I'm walking back to the locker room, and then all of a sudden, here goes this guy. He looks at me, and he says something in Spanish to me, and I don't understand a word he said. And next thing you know, he spits on me, and I got pissed off, and I got a luger, and I spit back at him. So, you know, hey, laughing, people laughing at him, this and that. I go to the locker room, take a shower, change. Towards the end of the night, I'm driving back to where I'm staying at with uh, security. So we're walking out the building, and next thing you know, I hear, here's this guy that I spit on holding a 9 millimeter to my head. Oof. And lucky for the security guy, he got in between us and he started talking to him. And as he did that, I just backed up and I went back in the locker room and I sat in the locker room and I didn't know where to go. There was no other place to go. And uh, at that time, uh, um, Jose Estrada's son, Rico, uh, was wrestling down there and he came out of the shower and he looks at me and he goes, Lord, he goes, what's wrong? He goes, man, he goes, you're pale. And I told him what happened and that's his hometown. So he goes, oh, this is not going to happen in my hometown. So he got dressed, and before you know it, security came and got me and said, let's go, let's go. The guy left, and we had to shoot in the car and take off. And, uh, you know, that was just one thing that happened down there. I went through a whole lot in Puerto Rico. I could write a book, a book and a half, that is, of all the stuff that went on, uh, you know. But it was good times, and there was a lot of bad times. What were your thoughts when Brody, when Brody was murdered, if I can ask well, I mean, I can never, I, I can remember uh, me and my dad, we were sitting in the house and my uncle was actually there when it happened. And okay. uh, he called my dad and he was telling him about what happened. Uh, but uh, I only met Brody a couple of times. And uh, the times that I met him, Frank, he was, he was a nice guy. You know, I was young. I really, you know, was just starting to get into business at that time. And, um, Everybody that I talked to and uh, told me about him said that Frank was a hell of a guy. He was, uh, you know, one of the guys, one of the best in the business at that time. You know, he was over like hell, that's for sure. Yeah. But, um, you know, his wife, I sat down and talked with her a little bit, uh, Barbara. And uh, she's, she's very nice as well. And, uh, you know, she just told me some stories about him. And it was it was good to hear things from her personally, you know. But um, all the boys, you know, that talk about it in Puerto Rico, you know, they uh, they don't say too much about it down there because, uh, you know, of course, uh, Jose uh, Gonzalez, uh, invader, he still was wrestling down at that time. And, uh, you know, I, I seen him a couple of times in the office when I had to do interviews. And I was kind of like, oh, man, scared. You know, I ain't going to lie to you. I was like, man, if I turn my back, this guy going to stab me or what? Right. <laughs> you know? Right. But um, uh, there was one night where um, Mr. Hughes didn't show up. So he was main event. And they put me in the main event. They said, okay, he didn't show up. We're going to have you work with uh, Vader. And here I am shaking. Oof. And my uncle looks at me. He goes, don't worry. I'm here. There's nothing going to happen. So I went out there, and first thing he goes over there, he, I'm wrestling with him, and he gets me, and he grabs me in the hole. So I reverse it, and I grab him in the hole. The next day, he looks up at me, and he goes, don't hurt me. I know you're a father and you're an uncle. And I looked at him, and I said, so? And I started beating him. <laughs> I said, <"Hey>, <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah <laughs> so i was like you know hey if i gotta give my my chance in i better get my licks in now there you go. of course uh he he got me back and put a damn knot in the back of my head i still got with a chair still but got um it. you know it it was scary i was scary to uh you know work with him the first time but after a while he didn't want to work with nobody else but me oh, wow there you go there you go lloyd how proud you must be. How proud are you of the bloodline? Did you ever think that Roman Reigns is going to end up being considered one of the all-time greats? This title reign is one of the longest going back to Hogan in the late 80s. Did you, did you ever think this would happen? And the Usos are now one of the clearly one of the all-time great tag teams. You must be very proud. Your thoughts on their recent push? Uh I'm actually very proud of my family and my cousins and my nephews. Uh, but to be honest with you, in the beginning, I never expected Roman to be in the wrestling business. You know, he was, uh, 
the what D one uh, player for uh, for uh, you know play football, and then you got you know uh, uh, you know uh, after uh, college he got um, leukemia, right? What is it? Uh, they, they, he went to the Chargers, I think it was. Okay. Yes, mm-hmm. yeah, okay. I think uh, they yeah. Uh, the NFL, you know, drafted him into the Chargers, and uh, and that's when they found out, you know, uh, about his condition, you know, with the leukemia and all that. Right. But um, I didn't expect him still at that time to go into the wrestling business because he really, Joe wasn't, he wasn't really around the wrestling that much when he was young. But uh, he made that phone call to my uncle and said, hey, he wanted to be part of business. And when he did, uh, I knew from there that he was going to be a superstar. Really? Because he's got the look. He yeah, I mean, he's got the look. Yeah. He's got the talent. I mean, uh, uh, if you ever really got to sit down and talk with him, he's, his knowledge is very, very good. And, uh, you know, uh, when I seen him in uh, when he was down there in uh, FM, I think it was, yeah, FM, FMW. No, yeah, he started FMW then. Mm-hmm. It was NXT, all that, when he first right. started NXT. But uh, when he was there, Vince actually told him, he goes, I'm going to make you the next rock. Really? He sure did. He wow. sure did. He sure was, did, yeah. Was Roman bothered by over the years, you know, does Roman even pay much attention to the internet? Because when he was being pushed as a face, there was people just tearing into him. We always loved him. We loved him even when he was being, you know, pushed as a face, because I thought he had it. But was he bothered by any of the, you know, the trolling and the remarks on the internet? Does that stuff bother if i could call him this joe yeah and i mean I, i'm sure it did i mean uh you know we, we used to sit down and talk matter of fact we actually were both of us were together we did the things for uh for actually our cousin uh Dwayne. we did the hobbs and shaw we did the, the trailer for that and uh, we really sat down and talked and that's the same time that you're talking about where he was a baby face but you know people were taking him as you know just booing him and everything uh, and and it, it probably did bother him, but he knew that he had business to do, you know, and uh, he just kept a, kept it straight. Did you get a chuckle when you saw him with Paul Heyman, your former boss, Paul Heyman, managing him? <laughs> yeah, I'm happy. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that because Paul's been around our family for years. I mean, he started in the business when he was actually, you know, doing interviews and, and being a photographer and all that years ago. Hmm. So he's he's, you know. He's been around our family for years, and uh, Paul's always been good to us. So I was happy that he was part of that because I know he's got a lot to do with a lot of that's going on because his brain is – I can see him in in a lot of uh, what's going on. So I'm, I was happy that he was part of it. So Paul's putting in some cre- serious creative right now with the bloodline. I, I think so. I mean, uh, it probably don't look like it, but I, right. I, I would say he's got something to do with it because – He's not just going to sit back and, and, and not do anything. Paul's not like that. Who's the head of the table? The Rock or Roman Reigns? Oh, boy. Oh. Oh, boy. Man. Be careful. Well, you know, <laughs> no, I'm going to tell you who the real head of the table is. Do it. <laughs> it do it. ain't Dewey and it ain't, the, it ain't Roman. It's my dad. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. He's yeah. the one that started us all in this wrestling business, and he is the one that is the head of the table if you want to get serious about it. 